Hello everyone. Welcome back to the Code to Discovery YouTube channel. In today's video, I am thrilled to share with you 5 incredible datasets in the field of Tami Informatics and Bioinformatics. These datasets aren't just numbers and letters on a screen, they are the building blocks of groundbreaking research, the key to unlocking mysteries in drug discovery, and the foundation for innovative solution to some of the humanity's most pressing challenges. But here is the best part. Whether you are a seasoned researcher, a budding scientist or just someone who loves a good data-driven story, these datasets are perfect for your project, practice or even building your thesis. So grab your lab coat, put your data scientist hat on and let's embark on a journey into the microscopic wonders of machine learning in chemistry and biology. I am gonna start off by importing pandas as PD. I'm also gonna be setting the options to display maximum columns so that we can see all the columns in our dataset. So let's go ahead and run this. The first dataset that I wanna talk about is Delaney's solubility dataset. Predicting the solubilities of organic compounds is highly challenging and quite desirable in pharmaceutical industry as poor solubility can lead to low bioavailability, limiting the effectiveness of the drug. It has many other uses, for example, it is essential in environmental studies when assessing the fate and transport of pollutants. Apart from this, the knowledge of solubilities of compounds can play a major role in material science, agrochemicals and pesticides and food and flavor industry. So let's go ahead and have a look at the publication where this dataset was first published. So John S. Delaney in the year 2004 published a paper titled ESOL, Estimating Aqueous Solubility Directly from Molecular Structure. In this paper, he predicted the aqueous solubilities of organic compounds directly from their structure. So in this paper, he used physicochemical and topological descriptors such as calculated log P, molecular weight, proportion of heavy atoms in aromatic systems, and number of rotatable bonds for predicting the solubilities. So let's go back to the notebook and have a look at the dataset. The dataset is stored in a file named delaney.csv. So let's go ahead and load this dataset with the help of pandas and have a look at the first five data points. So as you can see here in this dataset, we have the names of the organic compounds, myer log solubilities, which would be our target or dependent variable. And we also have the predicted solubilities, which Delaney predicted in his paper. Along with that, we have the smile stings. Now, the descriptors are missing from this data set. So what I did was I went ahead and calculated the molecular descriptors using RDKit from the smile strings of these molecules. And that data is stored in Delaney underscore RDKit.csv file. Uh, and I'm going to be providing you all these data sets uh, on the, in the GitHub re repository. And I'm going to be providing you the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and have a look at the data set containing RD descriptors. Now, uh, apart from all this information, uh, like names, Meyer log solubility, smiles, we have the RDKit descriptors, both 2D and 3D. And if, if you want to have a look at the shape, we have 1144 data points and 224 columns. And if you take these three out, we will have 221 molecular descriptors, which you can use for your machine learning or QSAR studies. Now the next data set that I want to talk about is Kretna's toxicity data set. Like solubility, understanding the toxicity of compounds is highly desirable, especially in environmental science, public health, pharmaceuticals and chemical industry. Regulatory agencies have set standards for acceptable levels of toxicity in various contexts. And industries must comply with these regulations to ensure that their activity do not pose unacceptable risks. To human health and the environment. For more information about the data set, we can go to uh, their seminal publication. So the paper was published in Chemosphere in the year 2021 by Skretna and co-workers with the title Generating Accurate in Silico Predictions of Acute Aquatic Toxicity for a Range of Organic Chemicals Towards Similarity-Based Machine Learning Methods. Now the highlights of this paper is that they have used kernel-weighted regression study to build a machine learning model. And uh, uh, they have found out that aquatic toxicity is affected mainly by lipophilicity, reactivity, and polarizability of the compounds. 
one more point that I want to talk about is in this paper, they have uh, used two data sets. Uh, they have predicted the acute aquatic toxicity of organic compounds on Daphnia mag magna, which is a flea, and Oresia latipase, which is a Japanese rice fish. So what they do is inject these organisms with these organic compounds and the concentration at which these organisms die is basically the uh, toxicity level. So basically these toxicities are determined in EC50 values or LC50 values. EC50 stands for effective concentration and LC50 stands for lethal concentration. So let's go back to the notebook and uh, see what's in the data set. So the data set for the toxicity of organic compounds against uh, Daphnia magna is stored in uh, scratna underscore magna csv file. So let's go ahead uh, load this and have a look at the first five data points. So we have uh, lots of information here, ID, gas, number, smiles, chemical structures, these are all indexes. So um, what we have here is we have the, um, we have two toxicity categories. Um, one has acute two, acute one, and uh, acute three um, labels, and the other one has, um, I think two labels. So let's go and first check these labels. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna uh, use the column here, GHS acute toxicity, and I'm gonna call a unique method on it. So we have acute two, acute one, and acute three labels here. And regarding uh, other toxicity, we have uh, highly and moderate toxic and slightly toxic and relatively non-toxic. So basically toxic and non-toxic categories. So what you can do is use these uh, for a classification problem here, uh, either of these here. Um, it has three labels and this has two labels. So this would make a good uh, classification uh, machine learning model. These are the descriptors which they have used. And this is the experimental log one by EC50. Uh, value so that's the experimental toxicity and this is the predicted one which they predicted using their model uh, you can use this for comparing your uh, predicted values and if we uh, want to have a look at the shape it has 495 data points uh, which is uh, quite reasonable, uh, especially when we have experimental mm, values here. Now, uh, again, I have uh, went ahead and calculated the RD descriptors as well, and that have been stored in scratna underscore magna underscore RD kit CSV files. So let's just run this. So in this data set, apart from uh, all that columns, which I showed you above, we have the RD kit descriptors. And you can use these descriptors for regression problems where you can take this as your uh, target or for classification where you can take either of these. Now let's talk about the data set where uh, we have the toxicity of organic compounds against Oresia's latipase, which is Japanese rice fish. Uh, that data set has been stored in scratna underscore latipase. Uh, so let's run this. Again, it has IDs, gas numbers, smiles, uh, structures, names. Uh, the categories are same here and the descriptors are different here. So, um, uh, and we have the experimental log LC50 uh, value and predicted LC50. So um, you can either use these descriptors or you can use the RD kit descriptors which are in scratna underscore laddy PS underscore RD kit CSV file. So let's run this. And here in here, apart from all these um, columns, we have the RDK descriptors for all these molecules here. So the columns have, we have is 228. Uh, I think if you take these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns out, we'll have 220 and one molecular descriptors calculated using RDK. Now moving on, the next data set that I want to talk about is Chlorius's homolumo energies data set. Now homolumo gap determines energies required for electronic transitions. This is crucial in the design of materials like solar cells and organic LEDs. Also, this is a key factor in understanding and predicting the chemical reactivities. 
for more information we can uh, go and have a look at the seminal publication so this paper was published in cam in the year 2020 by sanford glorious and their co-workers uh, the title was structure based platform for predicting chemical reactivities uh, the highlights of this, this paper is that they have used uh, multiple fingerprint features for predicting various properties such as yields, stereoselectivities, relative conversion, homoluma gaps. Um, in this particular mm, video, I'm just going to be talking about the data set which has the homoluma gap analogies. So in here, they have uh, generated a data set of around 2900 organic compounds using DFT calculations and what they have done is use MFF for predicting these homoluma gaps. So you can further go ahead and explore uh, this paper. It is uh, an open access journal so you can uh, you might not need institutional access for this. So coming back to the data set, uh, these uh, homoluma gap energies have been stored in a data set called orbital underscore energies CSV file. So let's load this and have a look at the first five data points. Now it just has the smile strings and energy gaps. So what I have done is I have calculated the descriptors for you using RDKit and that data has been stored in orbital underscore energies underscore RDKit CSV file. So let's run this. So we have the smiles energy gap which would be our target and all the descriptors here uh, both uh, 2d and 3d descriptors let's go ahead and have a look at the shape so in here we have mm, 2904 data points and of course 221 molecular descriptors one target and one smile string Another data set that I want to talk about is Campbell's lipophilicity data set. Now like solubility is toxicity, uh, lipophilicity of organic compounds is also important for several reasons, particularly in the field of drug discovery, environmental science and toxicology. Lipophilicity is the affinity of a compound for a lipid or fat-like substances and its knowledge is important in drug design and pharm pharmacokinetics, bioavailability, cellular uptake, toxicology and formulation of pharmaceuticals. So for more information, you can visit this Campbell's official link for this data set. Now, uh, this data set has been stored in Lipophilicity CSV file. So let's run this. Now it has the Campbell IDs, um, uh, target column, EXP. Now in here, EXP uh, stands for Mayed Octanol Water Distribution Coefficient log D of the compounds, which is basically the um, Mayed uh, Lipophilicity values. And we have the smile strings here. Now again, uh, since there are no descriptors, I went ahead and calculated the RDKit descriptors which have been stored in this file over here. So let's run this. So we have the uh, Campbell IDs, log D values, smile strings and the um, RDKit descriptors here. Let's have a look at the shape. So we have 4200 data points and 211 descriptors along with smiles column and compound IDs. Next, I want to talk about is CIDR dataset. As CIDR stands for Side Effect Resource, uh, which is a database of marketed drugs and adverse drug reactions. There are 27 side effects which have been listed in this dataset for 1427 approved drugs. There are various resources. If you want to dig deep into this CIDR um, uh, database, you can just visit these websites. Um, in here, I'm just going to be talking about the dataset which is uh, stored in CIDR. Uh, .csv file so let's go ahead and run this so we have smile strings and the um, the side effects which these molecules can have for example this is hepatobiliary disorder if the value is one that means this molecules uh, can cause this dis disorder whereas zero indicate um, no side effect uh, similarly so uh, if we look at the shape here We have 1427 molecules and uh, if we just leave the smiles 27 columns or 27 adverse effects now again you can guess by now i have the article descriptors here so let's just first run this file and see our descriptors so we have the smile strings 27 side effects and the molecular descriptors so what you can do is you can use these descriptors as your features and uh, these side effects as your target uh, and it could be a 
great uh, classification problem. Now in this video, I just have talked about our decade descriptors, but you can go ahead and generate um, various other descriptors using other software such as more red, battle pi, and even you can go ahead and explore the molecular fingerprints. Uh, and, and I have made videos on pretty much all of these topics or, or as in how you can calculate the molecular descriptors and fingerprints. So um, if you're interested, you can uh, check out these videos. There are many other data sets out there which can really make a great machine learning project. So let me know in the comment section if you want more videos on this topic. Before you leave, don't forget to like and subscribe to join us on this exciting adventure. Thank you for watching.